And I'm also suggesting here, I'm also suggesting that intermittent fasting, taking to an extreme, cutting back your calories to 500 calories a day episodically, going on water fasts and juice fasts, do not lead to people maintaining an ideal weight and the most favorable lifespan. Let me say this one more time and explain this a little further. That if you're a normal weight person, and don't forget, um, I fast people who have certain medical conditions like asthma or lupus to help them facilitate a recovery because I can use fasting therapeutically to help people get well. But I don't use fasting for people that are overweight. And especially I don't use fasting for people that are not on an ideal or not accepted and, and chronically adapted to an ideal way of eating. People who are overweight and try to use fasting to lose weight winds up they, they restrict their calories and they slow the metabolic rate down excessively. So now when the fast is completed, it messed with them emotionally. Now they have a slow metabolic rate, they're not gonna lose any more weight, but now they've triggered their emotional centers in the brain they're, that where they wanna actually have to eat more calories and it leads to a cycle of binging and fasting and overeating and fan. They wind up yo-yoing their weight up and down. A lot of people who are emotional overeaters and who are food addicts can then use intermittent fasting, juice fasting, and water fasting as a means to, to like undo the damage from their binging and overeating behaviors from being too overweight. And they just repeat this cycle over and over again of binging and overeating and caloric restriction with fasting and binging and overeating and caloric restriction with fasting. And the yo-yoing the weight up and down creates more saturation of body fats creates more body inflammation. It's not linked to longevity. It's not linked to a better health. What I'm saying right now, I'm giving a different viewpoint that the health to live as long as possible, be as healthy as possible. We need to chronically do what's right long-term and not utilize fasting as a tool to lose weight. I'm okay with a person fasting if they're not overweight and they're in perfect health. Then they're gonna fast and they're gonna drop their body weight too low and when they gain whack weight back again, they'll bring their weight back to their ideal weight. But if they're fluctuating their weight above their ideal set point, then they're losing weight and they're still overweight and the fast actually prevents them from losing weight. I'm saying after the fast is done, yet it increases their desire to wanna to eat more calories that very often feeds their out of control because you can't reset insulin, you can't reset insulin receptors and you can't reset dopamine receptors. That takes months, that takes three, six, nine months. And we need for people to chronically eat right to be able to see, um, adjust to and prefer the right foods and the right amount of foods. We're talking here about dieting doesn't work and extreme dieting doesn't work. You have to eat healthy foods and you have to eat them regularly and you have to modulate the calories you need and determine that you are the scientist. You are the nutritional scientist working on your body and you have to determine the amount of calories you need to maintain a stable and moderate amount of weight loss as you repeatedly go through this process and maybe the calories you need to lose two pounds a week or three pounds a week. See many people on our program here at the retreat, they might lose 20 pounds the first month and 15 pounds the second month, but then they kind of stabilize to eight to 10 pounds a month, especially as they get closer to their ideal weight. I'm saying that a nutritarian, a person eating a high nutrient health supporting diet that I recommend is either at their ideal weight or they're moving towards their ideal weight in a slow and steady process, continuing to lose weight each week, usually at the rate between two and three pounds a week. And then it can go down to one pound a week as they're within 30 pounds or within 20, 30 pounds of their ideal weight. But the point is they have to keep losing weight steadily every single week. Because when you're losing weight, right, and you're overweight, the inflammation comes down. The insulin resistance comes down. The estrogen production comes down. The angiogenesis production comes down. The, the, so all, I can go on and on. All the dangerous things that happen to go down when you're losing weight. In the process of losing, as long as you're dropping usually weight, most people at this rate of two pounds a week. And don't forget, I'm not saying how much calories you should consume. 
We generally serve overweight women between 1,200 and 1,400 calories a day here at the retreat of a large amount of healthy natural food. But that doesn't mean some people may need to treat that for their own individual needs, because some people may be small and, and not as physically active, not burning as many calories with exercise. So we, you've got to adjust that for yourself. But I'm saying here that when you eat all these healthy foods and we eat these high volume, high nutrient foods with lots of you know, greens and eggplant and peppers and mushrooms and onions and cauliflower and eating all these high foods, it makes it possible to eat enough food and feel satisfied while you can still control your calories. You can't control those calories to the right level you need when you're eating unhealthy food because you have unrelenting desire to over eat calories now. So you can't comfortably eat less food. Being on a nutritarian diet makes it so you can comfortably eat the right amount of calories for you. You may not be, you know, on a you may not, it doesn't promise that you're going to eat the right amount of calories. You can still overeat things, right? Even though you, but, but due to emotional reasons, but we, that's what we do. We try to get people, we have to train their way, their mindfulness, the way they're looking at food and the way they look at their body and look at how they go after happiness, right? We're trying to train them so they don't use food to, as a means of their own, of calming the brain. They have to know how to feel good about themselves and build so, self-esteem and not to use food as a drug to take care of their emotional needs. Mm -hmm.